Um, but I did want to thank everybody for joining us, uh, both my fellow Canadian and uh, U.S. colleagues, and spending their evening with us. So my name is Dr. Sheikh. In essence, I've been speaking uh, for Denmat as one of their uh, key opinion leaders for the last several years. And uh, the reason why is very simple. I've implemented the STM system in my practice. Uh, amazing results, amazing results. And I am just thrilled and excited to be able to share this with everybody all over the country. I've lectured many times in the U.S. as well. So without further ado, um, the first question I always ask doctors is really, are you treating your patients? Because I think this is the heart of what we're doing as dental professionals is asking ourselves, are we treating disease? And, and the definition really um, in the dictionary is the science and art dealing with the maintenance of health, prevention, or cure of the disease. So when you see a perio patient and this patient has bleeding or pockets, uh, what are we doing for this patient? You know, are we um, improving their health or every single time we see them, uh, we're seeing bleeding, more bleeding, more bleeding. And there's another definition further down that just states the branch of medicine concerned with the non-surgical treatment of disease. So, you know, if I had an option as a patient, you know, would I choose a surgical option or a non-surgical option? And I think this is where STM really comes into play. So we ask a lot of our attendees to fill out these forms, you know, where's your office at? What are your big problems that you're facing in your dental office? And all of them pretty much say the same thing. Patients are not valuing their dental visits. Um, we'd like to streamline our hygiene treatment plan. You know, we have one hygienist doing one thing in one office and another one doing another, sorry, in another operatory. There's production issues. There's no system. And these are common problems that come across Canada and U.S. So a little bit of background about myself. I did buy a practice after a couple years associating because that's what I was told I should do to be successful. And when I did so, you know, I had the same issues that many doctors have, the front staff issues, my hygienist, you know, was not, we were not taking perio charts regularly. We were not billing. In fact, we were losing money in hygiene. We have absolutely had no perio protocols. Um, I got resistance from these existing patients because, you know, here's this great looking Pakistani dentist, haha, who decides to take over this practice that's been there for 25 years. And now he's telling us that we need to have this, these different types of treatments. So I call it the young dentist trying to pay off their syndrome. Of course, not to mention the competitive area. And I'm sure everywhere we practice, whether it's in Canada or US, there's a lot of competition. So what did I decide to do? Well, as a result, I was told, you know, hire a consultant. So I hired many different consultants and, and the list goes on and on. And what I can tell you is they make great paperweights. But at the end of the day, I was left with no streamlined system that I could use to improve my perio program and streamline my office. So I also decided to advertise. And, you know, and for those of us who spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on advertising, um, it's important to track that return on investment. But when I did, the number one source of revenues was referrals. So for those of you who are trying that and you really evaluate, you know, where your production is coming from, you'll realize very quickly that referrals are the number one. So we always say this and in and, 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 and all over Canada and U.S., it's the same thing. It's not about acquiring a ton of new patients. It's about keeping the ones that you have because these patients are already in your practice. They have bleeding, they have pockets, and they just need treatment. And at the end of the day, those are the patients who are going to generate more referrals. So our ODA, which is our local society and, and, and everywhere really in Canada and the U.S., states very clearly that we should be keeping the patients we have. They, they know your service. They know who you are. It doesn't cost you anything to tell these patients, listen, we want to improve your care and get you to a healthier state. How do we do that? Well, if you were myself, I decided to try it on my own. So, you know, my, one, my hygienist had Cabotrons. We had the Oral-B. The other hygienist had a Sonic Air. And of course, when we need to start treating perio in our practice, hygienists all want what? They want more time to treat the patient. So we had to hire a second hygienist. As a result, we treated the patient, I call it the Dr. Shake perio program. So the before is on your left, which is the perio chart. The after, which is about a reevaluation six weeks post-op, uh, you'll see there's no improvements in pocket depths bleeding on probing. And for those of you who are doing the doctor so-and-so program and you're not getting results, this is where we need to self-reflect and say, listen, when something's not working, we have to change. So as a result, I heard a couple years after this Dr. Shake Perio program that there was a soft tissue management seminar coming up. So I decided to take my staff to the seminar. I'll be honest, it was a very fair fee. 
with lunch. And you know, when you can feed five staff at a very cost effective rate, you'll snap at that right away. So I did. And I heard the message. It was from uh, Dr. Shane Hunt, who's, who's actually a great friend of mine now. And I listened and I changed. And what did I do? This is one of our first patients. So obviously, I decided to invest in the program. We actually had bought a couple of piezo units and some rodents, which we'll talk about shortly. So this is one of our first patients, Victoria. She presented, obviously, with some pockets and bleeding. We educated her about, his, her, about her disease, took her through the steps through the soft tissue management program. We treated her in four visits, quad therapy. And this was her six-week reeval. Okay. Now, some hygienists will say, well, it's not perfect. Oral health care is not perfect. It's heavily reliant on the patient's home care and obviously their genetic predisposition. But what's interesting to see is we took a perio chart a year later and the disease is fairly suppressed. Now, this is when we didn't have other adjuncts, which we'll be talking about today. But I would be very confident that we'd be able to get this patient to a state where there was no pockets and no bleeding. And that's amazing to be able to tell your patients that. Now, why? The patient's happier because they now have a healthier mouth, they can actually feel the difference. And when they come in, they'll tell us, "Is do I still have a four millimeter pocket on my lower left? Like how amazing is that to have your patient invested in their oral health? And as a result, they're more prone to coming back as we recommend. Uh, the front staff is happier, why? Because nobody likes a dentist hanging over their shoulder asking them, is the schedule full? When are you gonna put down your coffee and book that patient? So. If you would remember, the initial patient that I saw was only going twice a year for cleaning, which is two visits. For her, we treated her in quad therapy, which is four visits, a reevaluation, which is six weeks later, so that's five, and then two additional three month scalings. So that is in one year, seven appointments from the standard two that she was receiving. Okay, so the schedule books up fairly quickly. The hygienist is happier, and I hope you guys are all sitting down right now because the hygienist is happier because she actually got trained to do what she's supposed to do, which is get patients healthier. Not the in and out type of hygiene, not the, hey, I'll clean you and see what happens in six months, the actual improvement of a patient's health, which is why we all got into this industry, I would hope. And the last, the dentist is happier, not only because there's an increase in production and a busier schedule, but when they go to do a filling or a crown, guess what? There's no bleeding. We've actually treated the tissues and the base and the foundation before we've gone and done the restorative work, which is how we were all taught to do it, right? This is the right way. So for me, what did that mean? That meant that that led to an increase in my production. So in 2008, I tried to do the Dr. Shake Perio program, and you'll see there's a small little increase here, sorry, in 2007 from uh, just an increase in fees. In 2008, and this was about uh, February or March of 20, 2008, we implemented the STM and we increased our production that year of $300,000, okay? So that's an amazing improvement, and since then, the increase in production allowed us to build our practice. So I think the goal for today's seminar is, number one, recognizing that there's a problem in your practice. And that problem is there's no system for perio. And how are we going to get this system and streamline it? And that's what soft tissue management is about today. So STM is truly about the three Ps. Number one, the people. You know, you cannot do this without having great staff. As a team leader, which is yourself, the dentist, you need to motivate and lead your staff in change, right? So that they can do better. Give them the tools and the technology to be able to treat your patients or your mutual patients to the highest level. Number two, of course, the patients, right? Because if we treat these patients to the highest level, they will be loyal and they will refer. And the natural result of doing what's best for our people and our patients is profit. It's not something that we have to sit down and figure out how are we going to improve our production. It will happen naturally because you're focusing on these two things initially. So soft tissue management, welcome to soft tissue management, is an organized system for detection, diagnosis, treatment, and maintenance such that our patients can stay healthy. In addition, it includes early detection of oral cancer, which is, I believe, and we all believe, a fundamental part of an oral screening and initial exam. So the five pillars of success we're going to talk about are outlined in front of you. We're going to go through each step in particular, which are integral parts of the STM program. Now, why do we need soft tissue management? Because some of you may be thinking, well, listen, you know, this guy's thinking it's just very complicated when it doesn't need to be that complicated. 
but in fact it is. If you look at this, this is from an old textbook, STM, you know, perio therapy involves talking to the patient, diagnosing the disease, uh, mechanical therapy, maintenance, behavioral modification, and then of course, administration, which is insurance. And believe it or not, we spend a large portion of our seminar, throughout the seminar, talking about insurance. And we'll get to that also shortly, okay? But why is it important? Three out of four adults still have some form of perio disease. These patients are actually already in your practice. So when we look at actually the percentage of services that are filed currently right now, and whether we're looking at Canada or US, it's the same. Non-surgical perio is not being billed out. So either, number one, we are doing these services and we're not billing for it, or at the end of the day, our doctors are not, that's basically the truth. Let me, let me just call a spade a spade here. We're not billing for it, right? Because we're not, it's not like we're not treating our patients. So are we giving away a segment of our practice as our overhead increases? And I know in Ontario and both in Canada, that in overhead is increasing. So why are we doing this? You know, why are we killing ourselves? to treat these patients when in essence, we're so insurance driven. And that's one thing that we're gonna talk about as well. So the key here is instead of picking up that probe and looking for decay, the first thing I ask my hygienist for is pass me the Explorer. Drop the Explorer, pick up the probe. And the probe in our office is very simple. Zero to three millimeters with bleeding, that's how much it costs to treat, okay? Three to five millimeters with bleeding costs 1300. And anything above that, generally a stage three type perio costs that much to treat. And this is generally, these are classified into programs, which we'll talk about. But we need our hygienists. Our hygienists are the key practitioners in our practice that are going to allow us to diagnose and help with ensuring that our patients get treated to the highest level. So instead of looking at that sticky margin, I ask you to really pick up a probe and look for bleeding, right? Because at the end of the day, I don't think our hygienists understand that they're actually preventing bone loss. And I put some pictures up here to show you what surgery looks like. So I do a lot of it in my practice. It's uh, whatever you see clinically as far as bone loss is always magnified once a flap is open. So when you're, are you just cleaning the teeth? No, you're preventing bone loss is what you're doing as a hygienist. So ask yourself this, what are you currently doing right now with those scales, right? The zero to three with bleeding the three to four with bleeding, and the five and above. And some people may think, well, zero to three with bleeding is not a problem, right? Well, I think you might be in the wrong webinar because bleeding is inflammation and that's an indicator that there's something wrong. So we need to recognize that these are important things, but why are we killing ourselves? So if you imagine the patient who comes in has not been in for a full year, they now come in and they get their quote unquote cleaning in one hour, and now you ask them to come back in three to four months. Why would they come back when they just received their cleaning in one hour, right? So what message are we giving? Or why are we trying to kill ourselves and get the patient fully cleaned when at the end of the day, we're leaving stuff behind and we're becoming late in our practice, right? We're running over time, we're running over schedule. What needs to change is we need to be honest with our patient and tell them, listen, there's a problem. And that's where STM comes in on how to do that. So perio disease is still a tragedy. This is a 1983 Hardin article talking about perio as a detrimental disease and that we need to treat it and that 90% of patients have perio. And guess what's changed over the last 40 years? Nothing. Okay, this article is 1981, 35 years old. 75 to 90% have perio, and 35 years later, Dr. Tenenbaum now has come out, and he's one of our gurus in perio in Canada, has said that now periodontitis is a syndrome, meaning running together with systemic illness, in fact. So I'm sure that we all mention to our patients that the mouth is a gateway to the rest of the body, and when we treat the mouth, in essence, we're helping the rest of the body. So I know all over the country, diabetes is on the rise. And I've seen it more in my practice, patients who are pre-diabetic and now are diabetic. Those patients are at four times the risk of bone loss. And these are things that we have to inform our patients. So I'm sure we all know the systemic links and we do throughout the seminar go through many of the systemic links as well as the chain of inflammation and CRP uh, and these types of other things, which we don't have time to discuss today. But what's great about DENMAT and the soft tissue management program is it gives you some literature that you can give your patient and classify your patient. Say, Mrs. Jones, you're in early perio right here. You have diabetes and heart disease. If we don't treat your mouth, 
then as a result, your systemic illness could get worse and vice versa. If you have diabetes, then this is one of the reasons why you may be more prone to disease. And this is why we need to treat it. We can't treat your insurance company because your insurance company covers an 18 year old female who's perfectly healthy. And unfortunately that's not you, right? So welcome to STM. The first step being detecting the disease. We, our job is to detect the disease before further elimination occurs, correct? So many of us see these patients in our practice, right? And we say, oh, you know, this is a healthy dentition, but guess what? She's got bleeding with four millimeter pockets. This is your first soft tissue management patient. Because if we wait long enough, some patients who walk in like this, the person who works at the gas station could tell you that that patient has perio. All right, that's a full mouth extraction. But these are the patients that we need to treat to ensure that they stay healthy for years to come. So the initiation and progression of perio involves multiple factors. We know plaque or biofilm, right? Bacterial virulence factors. And of course, one of the most important parts, which is the inflammatory response of the host, which now we're finding out that it's mainly genetically driven based on the host response. So we all remember the ADA clinical guidelines, BOPs, clinical attachment, frication, and mobility. But how many of us actually spend the time recording these things in a busy practice where we're getting them in and getting them out? We have 45 minutes to do this. We don't. Truly, we don't. So we know from, this is a 1997 textbook that I had in dental school, saying the deeper the pocket, the greater the risk of future breakdown. The greater the number of pockets, the higher the risk. Sites that bleed repeatedly increase risk. So what are we waiting for? Are we wait, what's your magic number? Do you start treating the patient when there's seven millimeters with bone loss? Right? What's your number? Right? That's what you have to ask yourself. So what tools are necessary to get an accurate diagnosis, first of all? Right? So we talk about a mirror. We talk about a probe. We talk maybe about an intro camera, proper instrumentation. But nobody ever talks about loops. You have to be able to see. You know, and all dentists have loops, most of us do. We even have lights with our loops. Why? Because we're working in a small space. But many of our hygienists don't. And as a result, it's very difficult to take probing measurements and accurately debride a patient when you can't see properly, right? So we feel like loops is an integral part. Not only does it enhance your vision, promote proper posture, but it also can improve your performance and quality of care. So uh, Denmet has some offerings um, called perioptics, which we, we, you know, during the course, a lot of attendees are able to try those attendees who currently have loops. Um, I love this firefly, which is an attach on to your loop so that you can actually still, you know, you can see and it's very light. Instrumentation is also a big thing. You know, in, in some in some offices, I used to do consulting actually for about four or five years. And some offices, um, we would notice that uh, honestly, it was better to remove tartar with the fingernail than it was with the scaler that they had in their kit. So having sharp instruments, important, and instruments that you can read probing measurements on so that everybody is standardized. But one of the most important aspects is opening up that patient dialogue. And this is where STM really shines. We really focus a lot of time with your team to ensure that as soon as a patient comes in, that they're well managed, meaning the medical and dental is updated. The patient is told that, listen, if it's been a year, and you haven't been here for a year, then most probably you won't be able to have your cleaning completed today. Because if your house wasn't cleaned for a year, it would probably take you a little bit longer, correct? And what happens when we say this at the front staff, our hygienists now start enjoying our company. Because many cases, our front staff and our back end don't get along. And the reason why is these things are not told to a patient. No, come in, Miss Johnny, you're gonna have your cleaning done. And the hygienist is like, what do you mean? This is a stage two perio patient. I need like three appointments or four appointments. So this is where opening up that dialogue, taking a proper history initially with the patient, and then talking our patient through the exam. And again, we verbalize this through, during our seminar so that everybody on the team is on board. When we talk about measurements, we talk about saying them out loud, what are good and what are bad measurements, you know, zero to three normal and three and above are, are areas of concern. And what this does, it involves our patient. Instead of perio being something that is hidden behind the patient and hush hush, it's now at the forefront and the patient understands that this is their disease and you are the professional there to help them. So these are the measurements that we take. I typically encourage a color printer. 
so that the patient can leave with something stating, listen, there's a problem. We have a solution. And remember, this is where you need to have that solution because the patient will want to hear what your solution is. And it educates the patient even more. So probing and charting, not an option. It's absolutely mandatory when we present in soft tissue management. So detection, I think, is very important. Another key aspect at that initial appointment, which generally is almost like a comprehensive oral examination or a new patient exam, we would also do an oral cancer or, or lesion detection, right? So it's important to know that many people die every day from oral cancer. And this is the Canadian stats. I should have put the U.S. stats here as well, but they're no better. And the reason why is simple, late detection, right? Most of these patients now who are oral cancer victims actually don't use tobacco. And of course, we know the HPV virus has been responsible for a lot of oral pharyngeal cancers. So whose job is it at the end of the day, right? And I'll be honest with you, I've gone into medical rooms where they're doing a better comprehensive oral pharyngeal exam than most of us. And oftentimes it's because we don't have the time. So this is one of the things that we do focus on with the soft tissue management program is it's our responsibility, right? We need to do this. And early detection is critical. Why? Because if we can detect things at an early rate, then survival rates will increase. So this is not new, by the way. This is adjunctive screening is done for other cancers, including breast, cervical, and prostate. What do we do in our office? We always typically, all of us are doing a conventional head and neck exam, right? Pulling out the tongue. And this is something we review as well at the STM seminars. And we actually do like a demo or a live demo. But the offerings that oftentimes this conventional head and neck exam is not enough. So adjunctive tools, what DenMet offers and what I use in my practice is a combination of a Visalite Pro, okay, which is a fluorescence, um, and then a T-Blue marking system for a patient who may have a suspected lesion we then reappoint a couple weeks later, and then we're able to mark it. And T-Blue, again, without going into too many details, has the ability to mark things that may be uh, of concern, right? So this is just an example of what happens when we look at something under fluorescence. And what I love about the Visalite Pro is that it has a lot more LEDs, it's very easy to use, it doesn't need to be charged multiple times. But what's great about it is that it's very quick and easy. So it's not a dye, it's just very simple. You know, and now you can see the loss of fluorescence. Now, does that mean that's cancer? Obviously not. A biopsy would confirm that, but it draws our attention to something that we would not normally see with the naked eye, all right? So this is, again, an important part of our initial detection as we're going through the patient. Now, once we detect the disease, and we'll talk about now we're going to get into treatment, how do we treat this disease, right? So the pathogenesis of perio, of course, starts off as plaque, Correct leads to gingivitis, which is inflammation. That then turns into subgingival plaque. And then we start getting periodontitis, which basically, in essence, is bone loss associated with inflammation. So how do we know when that's going to happen? How do we know? Is there a bell that goes off with the patient telling us, next time I come in, that four millimeter pocket with bleeding is going to be a five millimeter with bone loss? We don't, which is why we have to treat the patients at a gingivitis state. All right, we have to really focus on those gingivitis cases. Now, when disease is present, therapeutic procedures are indicated. So when we're performing treatment on a patient who has bleeding or pockets, we're not performing a prophy or prophylactic care. We're performing active therapy. And therapy as a result, defined as scaling and root planing, now needs to be billed as scaling and root planing. So for those of us who are performing random scaling or prophies on patients, when in essence they're in need of treatment, we need to stop. We absolutely need to stop and remember what, what are we doing for this patient. So our soft tissue management programs are very simple. Zero to three is a program one with bleeding. Three to five with bleeding is a program two. And five to six is a program three. It's very simple. All hy most hygienists can follow that and doesn't matter if you have mat leave, you know, hygienists, they come and go. Everybody can follow that system. Normally, what I tell doctors is uh, if the hygienist feels they can treat the patient in one sitting, then that would be like a program one, the whole mouth. If the hygienist feels like she need, he or she needs two visits, like half the mouth in one session, half the mouth in the next, then that would be like a program type two. And the program three would be for quad therapy. All of these programs typically involve a reevaluation after four to six weeks. All right. What's great about the program as well, the STM program comes with documents that you don't have to really think about. So this is an example of one of those documents which states a notification of perio. 
it quantifies what they're seeing in their what we're seeing in their mouth. So how many bleeding points? How many pockets do they have? And it puts something on paper so they can understand that this is a serious matter. All right. Insurance is a big topic that comes up. Questions come up a lot about insurance. What I will tell you very simply is that Denmat, of course, has come up with this program. We have all the codes for the Canadian market and the U.S. practices. Codes are broken down. The lists, whatever you need to send is already done for you, right? We don't give this away because it's proprietary. We also want doctors to invest in the program so they do it the right way, um, which is one of the reasons why I was one of the doctors who said, well, let's stop giving these codes away because, you know, I'd speak in New York one year and I'd come back and they would say, well, uh, I used your program. I said, what did you use? Well, we used your codes. Well, are you doing it the right way? No. Well, that's not STM. So we want doctors to really have success with STM. So this is an example, and these are the Canadian codes, of uh, an initial exam, which is in essence a comprehensive oral exam, x-rays, and oral hygiene instructions. That's about a $300 appointment. And you've spent time with the patient diagnosing them. Many patients are due for these types of examinations as well. So that's important. Here is the initial diagnosis for STM for in the U.S., right? So a proper diagnosis appointment typically takes about an hour. Now, my advice, and we really stress this in our program, is to present things as one fee. It's very important to do that because otherwise patients will say, I don't want this. I don't want that. It's like a crown. Oh, you know what? I want the crown but I don't want the post in core. Well, it's not possible. We can't break this up. It's all or nothing because we know this is how it works. So a type one would be a gingivitis case. A type two would be an early periodontitis case, as I described. And again, we go through these throughout the day and how to classify them and structure them in a type three and four. The type four typically get referred out, right? The fee ranges generally, not including the initial exam, x-rays and oral hygiene instructions, These are the ranges depending on the practice. And this fee includes the oral home care device, which we'll talk about shortly. So this is a fairly productive program because we are now treating the patient. We're spending more time with the patient. There's more appointments involved. And as a result, the cost increases, right? So here's an example of a patient who has some moderate bleeding in the posteriors with some four millimeter pockets. And we classified him as an STM1. And we treated him. So the left perio chart is the pretreatment. The right perio chart is a six-week reeval and no bleeding, no pockets, and now we maintain him. Here's a case type two treatment plan. This is an example that you would be given. Very simple. You put your logo on it and you're good to go. That's how simple the program is. And it tells us This is what we're going to do in therapy one, therapy two, our second session, and our reevaluation. And it's one fee. This is for the patient we give you the codes for the actual program that you would submit to the insurance company. If they ask about insurance, your insurance works great here. The goal of the program actually and the the actual seminar itself is to get doctors and staff to understand that insurance doesn't drive our practice. And if we present what we feel is best to our patient, just like patients spend money out of pocket for crowns, they will spend money out of pocket for the whole mouth and foundation, which is more important than the crown. Here's an example of an STM type two, and you would see this commonly tomorrow morning, right? Patient who has bleeding, posteriors, four millimeter pockets, and now we treat him in two visits, half the mouth in one session, half the mouth in the next, and then a reevaluation. And now, because there's bleeding on the lower left and upper left around his wisdom teeth, we discuss extraction of the wisdom teeth. So this is treatment, That that definition that we talked about, you know, alleviating disease, maintaining health, this is what STM is all about. It is not a deep cleaning. A deep cleaning is actually for rugs, and nobody really wants to have a deep cleaning, right? So verbiage is a large part of our program on how to talk to patients. We call STM a medicated cleaning that treats the disease, right? A medicated cleaning. And when we look at the numbers, and this is just on the low end, when we start treating patients who typically a type two, which is where you would want to see the patient for two visits and a reevaluation. If you just even get, you know, one patient a week, okay, who says yes, these treatments compared to treating a patient at $120, which is a regular cleaning, and by the way, not what they need, right? They need treatment. Um, The production is just, you know, almost like 200% more. So why more time, more time with the patient, you know, more services, which we're going to talk about as well. So when we treat the patient, what do we use? So the goal is we need to use 
technology to help remove biofilm. We all know, we've all heard about biofilm. It's a complex community of micro colonies and scaling and replaning, no matter when you look at the studies and, and the studies still say the same thing, scaling and replaning is the cornerstone. So our job is we need to remove the biofilm we need to initiate that healing process. And of course, we want to not damage the root surface because by damaging the root surface, we now can create further bacterial ingress. And most importantly, the patient will jump through the roof. Also, as I mentioned, we need sharp instruments. So the Cabotron, which is magnetostrictive, that's one of the technologies that we have available to us. And how does that work? That works in an elliptical motion. The EMS or piezolinear technology came out shortly after and that operates in a linear motion. Now, what is the difference and why is it important to understand that? When we look at a magnetostrictive type of device like the elliptical, which is right in the middle, you know, you hit that tooth and it hits that tooth and it comes off, hits that tooth and comes off. In a way, it never hits the same place twice, but that orbital or elliptic, sorry, that elliptical motion can create heat and sensitivity to a patient. When we look at a linear motion, that works such that it does not damage the root surface. Not only that, but we typically have an increased cycle per second as well. So a linear motion is more comfortable than an elliptical motion. Now, when we look at the literature that's out there, many people agree that magnetostrictive scalars, i.e. cabotrons, can burnish calculus onto the root surface. Piezos can remove that burnished calculus. Just recent literature out there talking about the survey comparing the merits of ultrasonic scalars, and they talk about how piezoelectric, a linear motion, is the way of the future. It's more efficient. It's less root damage. And look at this. Patients prefer piezo. Now, hygienists don't because initially it's something new that they have to get used to. So some of you on the phone may be saying, well, you know, I've tried a piezo. It's like anything new. We make it very simple. So we have a product called the ProSelect Platinum. And this is what I use in my office. It's a three bottled system, very easy to use. And we need those three bottles. Number one, we can control the temperature of the water, which makes it, you know, obviously in Canada, it gets very cold up here. I'm sure it does in certain parts of the US, but having freezing cold temperature water on your patient who has perio, not a good thing. So controlling the temperature of the water and then using medicaments to help kill bacteria. So our program or this unit uses a three-step approach. Number one, it uses ultrasonics via piezo technology. Number two, we use medicaments that help to decrease the bacterial load. And number three, we use heated irrigation, which can also act more efficiently, kill more bacteria. Not only that, but it's comfortable for the patient. By the way, this three-step approach, all have billable codes attached to them. So when we compare a piezo to a cabotron, I equate it to really taking a wisdom tooth out with a chisel. Nobody would really do that. But cabotron is quite frankly ancient technology. You know, when I do a lateral sinus lift, I'm not using magnetostrictive technology. We're using piezo technology because it's very gentle. So with this unit, you get improved visibility. It has a light. Just like we have a light on our handpiece, our hygienists should have a light on, our, on their scalers. Minimal heat generation because they're titanium tips. They're not metal tips. So they ge don't generate as much heat, improve patient comfort. And by the way, less heat means you're not drowning a patient, right? You don't have to cool that tip as much, right? Um, improve patient comfort. Um, and then the hygienist doesn't have to push as hard because the lateral force required with the piezo is very minimal and it's much more efficient. So this is what we use in the program. By the way, some of you who have a practice, you know, who've been practicing for several years and have a large patient pool, you're thinking right now, how am I going to tell my patient this? And I'll tell you right now, this device that's in front of you was my out. I told my patient simply, listen, we now have the technology to be able to treat your disease in office, or we can refer you out. What would you like to do? Because we did not have the technology before. Some patients will say, why didn't you tell me about this before, right? So these are, these are common questions and you need to have the answers. And by having this unit on my table, it really helped me in my practice with patients who had been there for so long to tell them, listen, there's a disease. We've told you about this. You know about it. We now have the tools and technology to treat it. So that's the cornerstone of STM. And now we have adjuncts that we add to really ensure that the patient's imperio can get healthier. So 
The adjuncts include locally applied antibiotics, and many of you currently are using them. The advantage, of course, is better compliance. We get an approved ED50 or effective dose 50 at the clinical site as opposed to an antibiotic, which is more of a systemic approach. And it takes, you know, obviously longer to get to that active site. And it's a controlled safe dose typically used in our program as an adjunct to scaling and replaning. So Arrestin, some of you have heard of Arrestin, it's minocycline HCL. And in essence, one carpule, you inject that underneath the tissue. The main problem with Arrestin currently right now, their own studies show a decrease in pocket depth. And that, by the way, was only after three placements were inserted. So three applications were performed over the course of nine months. I've found some okay results on the mandible, but I find on the upper, it actually starts coming out as you start placing. It doesn't stay where you put it. So Atrodox, the better generation of locally applied antibiotics, came out. And this is actually the only locally applied antibiotic that has been shown to do three things. Number one, reduce probing depth. Number two, reduce bleeding. And number three, an increase in clinical attachment. And what's great about this, when you compare the two, Number one, Atrodox has three effects. The Arrestin gets one. Atrodox, those effects occur after one application. Arrestin's effect you get after three treatments. The other concern with Arrestin is the cost because the cartridges are very expensive and that one cartridge treats one site. Typically our patients present with multiple sites of bleeding and pockets. So what's great about the Atrodox is it treats up to 10 sites. And we go through some tips and tricks on how to apply the Atrodox. So I've had patients, most of my practice is actually implant dentistry, where we placed implants, and now all of a sudden we see bone loss, peri-implantitis. So what do we do? Take out the implant, open the flap, graft it. So for this case, it was simple. I generally, I applied local, scale and root plane with titanium curettes, and I applied Atrodox. And this is just two months later. We now have bone regeneration in that area, no pockets, no plus, no bleeding, and now we maintain that. So it's fair, Atrodox is very effective as an adjunct to use in our perio program. Another adjunct that we use is peroxide. So we know that hydrogen peroxide delivered and maintained in the sulcus, it decreases the risk or the, the ability for anaerobic bacteria to survive. And that sweet spot is generally about a 10-minute exposure we have the percentage that they've researched and, and found what works. So what's great is Denmat has an offering for that as well. For these patients who are really have perio, aggressive perio, or maybe their compliance may not be as good. And now we can go ahead, make them trays, give them this perio restore tray with the gel. And what's nice about these trays is they have little cutouts or little kind of outlets, I guess you could call them, where they sit right interproximally. And that, as we know, is where the disease sits, right, interproximally. So another offering that we can use an adjunct, in fact, I, we use this in our practice for maintenance as well. You know, so we, once we have a patient who uh, undergoes treatment, we now can put them on a perio restore tray and they can use that I mean, it's a clinician's discretion, but typically they can use that a minimum of one up to four times a day for about 10 minutes at a time. Third option, third adjunct would be lasers. And, you know, I, I actually like to talk about lasers before I talk about locally applied antibiotics because locally applied antibiotics is, a, is, a, is an antibiotic in essence, right? It is a medication. Uh, I like to go non-medication route if I can, least aggressive. So lasers, we use a lot of lasers in our practice as far as treating perio. So the diode lasers is what, are what we typically use for soft tissue applications, right? And the advantages are that you get minimal bleeding, minimal discomfort, no recession, simple, easy to use. So there's a lot of procedures, number one, that the doctor can use from gingivectomies and class five restorations to phrenectomies, uh, which, you know, the patient typically often has a lower anterior and upper, you know, so what would we want for our patient, you know, grafting or phrenectomy? right? That's the key. So what I love about the laser is I get to use it a lot, and I do in my practice, but the hygienists use the laser as well. And what they use it for are three things. One is laser bacterial reduction, which is decreasing the bacteria before we perform our initial scaling replaning or even perioprobing. Number two, we can use it for desensitization of a tooth, and we show with demos on how to do that and the settings that we use. And then aptus ulcers, huge thing. Patients canceling from canker sores or any ulcers or lesions in the mouth, 
that are uncomfortable, we can use the laser to help desensitize and decrease pain in those areas. How do we use it with the perio program? It's simple. Initially, the laser is used for LBR to reduce the initial bacterial load. Then the scaling and replaning gets performed. And depending on what state you live in, some hygienists are able to actually cure at the area and remove the granulation tissue because there's a higher concentration of hemoglobin and melanin. That laser has an affinity for that and it can remove that disease. All right. And again, these are things that we go through with the program. So the Denmat lasers that, that are available, and the one that I actually love and I use in my practice is the NV, which is the wireless one. I always think if you're going to buy and invest in something, get something that's going to be easy to use so you actually use it. All right. What's nice about it is also comes with online training with safety and usage. So these are just some clinical examples of cases where, you know, I tried to do a filling and obviously there was tissue overgrowth and it's just very easy, it's very quick. And, you know, we build a patient for a gingivectomy, you know, or a curatage if we need to, and it improves the quality of care. Number two, here's a patient clearly with some issues. Patient could not afford a full mouth extraction. So by using the laser, troughing the tissue, endos and restorative, I was able to actually restore the patient's smile. And believe it or not, seven years later, this patient still has all this work other than his front central where he now has an implant. So here's a periotherapy where we actually winded up using the laser because this was a more aggressive perio. My hygienist felt like, listen, she wants to really get at it and make sure we get the best result. So this was an STM3 with a laser using a step back approach, which again, we talk about, and that's the post-op uh, re -evals. That's pretty good for, um, at this point at the re -eval, we then would insert Atrodox at this point um, to ensure that we could get an even better effect. So production and revenue for phrenectomies and, and all these different procedures with lasers is just there's a large value for having a laser because of the treatment modalities we can do. Now we've treated the patient. The key is preventing the disease. So using fluorides, and many of us do, I always tell our patient, we can't afford prevention. How can you afford the disease, right? So prevention is growing. We all know that. Our patients want to prevent issues, which is why, you know, many of them are getting gym memberships now or looking after what they eat, going vegan. So we know caries is a very high... Children in particular have a very high caries rate. I know I've seen it in my practice. Adults, caries is still the most common dental disease. And for the geriatric patient, the elderly population, there's a ton of root decay out there. So the ADA risk management states that if a patient has had more than two fillings in the last year, they're actually high risk. So they recommend fluoride usage or topical fluoride usage. So Denmat has available neutral sodium fluoride, which is what we use in our practice, the Floridex. And what's great is it's ideal for patients who have root caries or, you know, highly, you know, extreme caries risk. In particular, xerostomic patients, right? Because we see that polypharmacy patients are on multiple medications. They even have a sensitivity relief toothpaste. I know my wife loves this one, right? And that's a 5% potassium nitrate. So fluoride varnishes is what we're recommending because they're better, they're more efficient, and we want to help to prevent these patients from sensitivity in our practice and also caries as well. The indications go on and on, but at the end of the day, almost every patient can benefit, which is why most doctors are doing it, and we recommend it being part of the program. Home care, the last portion of this, which is the most important. Our patients are confused. They don't know what's going on because everybody's telling them this is what you need to buy. And they look to us as professionals to tell us what they should do. So the ADA risk management tells us the role of the patient is extremely important. 75% of these patients have disease, yet most of them are not flossing. In fact, the 400 people who are on this call right now are the ones who are the 2 to 20% who are flossing, right? So instead of giving our patients all these things, knowing that they're not going to use it, in the program, we tell doctors, change. We have to stop doing this. So we discourage the patient, and as a result, we recommend using one device, simple, it's easy to use, and that's called the Rotodent. It's got a very fine head, a small head. What's proprietary about it are the filaments. These filaments are very thin and they're very soft and they can actually get subgingival, much better than any traditional bristle on an Oral-B or Sonicare. Remember, perio is an interproximal disease, and as a result, even if they floss, they can't access all these areas, right? This is why they still need to see us. Currently, dental floss is being used for these things right here. Great for cutting cheesecake, but patients are not putting it in their mouth. 
And as a result, we ask doctors to decide what do they feel is the best tool to use in Proximal. And it's clear from the design, from the access, the rotodent on the right is the easiest and best tool for most patients to use because we know they're going to use one thing. Many studies on this oral home care device, it's very versatile. So we use it for perio maintenance. We also use it for ortho patients. Patients don't pay for chalky white teeth. They pay for white teeth. Uh, we also use, advise patients to dip it into chlorhexidine or prodenorox, which is what we use as part of the program, and it's found safe to use around implants as well. So studies have been done on the rotodent usage showing that it increased patient compliance, which is great, right? Instead of confusing the patient, giving them all these tools, we gave them this one thing, and it worked very well for them. And this is really a study beyond its years, which in essence showed out of 200 plus patients that Recare compliance even went up with the rotodent. So with the program, you will receive oral home care instructions that tell the patient what they need to do morning and night. And at the end of the day, have you modified your six-month recare? Because if your patients are coming in every six months, we know that they need to come in every three to four because otherwise the perio, that disease process can come back. But even those patients who are on a three to four-month recare, what are you doing with those patients? And it's important to know how to talk to a patient. We spend a lot of time on how to discuss with the patient, what to say, how to listen to hot buttons, and even how to dis talk to existing patients. Because we find most offices who attend are worried on how to review things with their existing patients. And that's something we focus on how with role plays, all right? If they refuse, we have a refusal form. And then we review it again later on. So I think the key for structure and organization and where Denmat really has stepped up is saying, listen, you invest in this program, we have a training, we're really gonna send somebody to your office to even help you train. And that's where the level two comes in. So at the end of the day, I think it all comes down to connecting with your patients. Many of us are scared that our patients are gonna say no or be angry with us because we didn't tell them this before. And I can assure you, they love you, they trust you, they just want you to help them improve their oral health. So by taking them through the process, showing them what's going on. And this is where we have a quick start guide. I'm not going to go through the whole thing here because I think it shows, but this is what you get when you attend the program. We take you through the steps, literally a step by a step on what to do and how to present and how to perform. And here are the codes on what to bill for therapy session one, two, and the reeval. And this is the early perio, how to perform and reevaluate maintain and monitor. And this is the offering where Denmat says, you invest in the program. We understand you're excited to implement this. We're going to send somebody to your office to help you implement this so that we can ensure because every practice has its own nuances, right? So this is my team. These are the people who I love who invest in my practice and look after our mutual patients. And as I mentioned, in 2005, it didn't work. We improved in 2008, we doubled our production, and currently are now we're, we're around 750K in just hygiene, and that's with one dentist and two hygienists. So I think this is a real opportunity for everybody out there to not only improve their production, but most importantly, improve the quality of their practice using the five pillars to success. With this program, you do receive patient education materials, and that's in, included in the program. Not only that, but you're dispensing home care material from your office, which means you have control, and you're including uh, sorry, cutting edge technology, which is great. The key is you have to think, you have to sit there right now and say, am I willing to change to improve my patient's oral health? If you do, you will get results like I did and many people across the country, and it will help you to develop a front and back team approach, which every office is direly needing and many offices are direly lacking. <music>